How's it going everybody? This is Tim from G.I. Joe Immortal and it's good to be back with you again. Today we're going to take a look at the Havoc and its driver and all of its features. This is cross country and he's kind of dressed up like a rebel soldier. Um, they changed a few things on him because they didn't want to be offensive and we can understand that so uh, we're not going to talk too much about that. We're just going to take a look at him real quick. He's got his uh, rebel cap on. He's got a little, looks like, uh, I'm not sure what those are. Those could be some kind of smoke grenades maybe. He's got a belt coming down, a green vest, white t-shirt. Got some gloves with some gauntlets on. Brown gloves, a brown belt. Uh, some gray pants got a painted on grenade looks like a grenade there and another kind of pouch there those could be pouches they look like pouches it's got some kind of white boots that are stirruped uh, the brown boots are with the white stirrups and some red piping on them um, really nice figure um, very colorful kind of a, a goofy country boy face with the brown eyes brown hair does have some goggles some small goggles on the top of the hat but uh, we're gonna put him in the seat there that's cross country this was put out in 1986 yeah. and uh, we'll read a little about about cross country the havoc driver he's in he was included with the havoc in 1986 uh, born and raised in Greensboro North Carolina, the final capital city of the Confederacy, the last place the Confederate government met as a group. It is easy to make an association between this heavy vehicle operator, his uh, primary military specialty, and the Confederacy, since Cross Country wears a belt buckle with the battle flag of the Confederacy sculpted on into its brass, and downs a gray Civil War replica Confederate Kepi his forge cap on his head. It should be explained here that the Hasbro designers were in no way supporting the Confederacy or the Union, simply that Ron Rudat, the head action figure designer, and Larry Hama were fascinated by the artifacts of military history, uh, as you can see, with uh, also in heavy metal in 1985. But in the Sunbow cartoon cross country, by definition, traveling over rough or open terrain speaks with a southern accent and is a popular vehicle driver because although his Havoc, a tracked vehicle, has natural advantages, it is a cross country, cross country's talent for sensing the most favorable grade, the shallowest mud, and the firmest sand that makes the difference. On the prototype file card, cross country's file name is Arlen W. Slaughter instead of Robert M. Blaze. And the vehicle he drives is the Rhino and not the Havoc in 1986. So, uh, file card is different. So, let's move on and take a look at the Havoc itself. As you said, it came out in 1986. Find it here. Should have had it marked. Here it is. Okay, Havoc stands for it's H A V O C, Heavy Articulated Vehicle Ordnance Carrier. Now, the Havoc was a unique track vehicle for the Joes since this is what it says on the back of the card anyway. A roving vehicle, vehicular fortress is an extremely versatile machine with pivoting dual track system for the toughest terrain. Now, that was on the package back, the box back. Now, with the following action features, the Havoc is a formidable force, an impact-resistant tilt-back canopy that opens for driver's access, four non-clogging rotating epoxy armor tracks with two sets of track covers, for the rear, two for the rear and two for the front, a positionable mid-gunnery post featuring a leveler dual recoilless 75 millimeter cannons with soft rock recoil compensation adjustment lifter. Now in the cartoons these were laser guns. So now it does move forward which is pretty cool. It does pivot and move forward like so. And you can move it up and down and also shows you the detail. We'll, we'll take a closer look here in a second. But uh, 
It also has a pretty cool surprise in the back here. I'll go ahead and open this canopy very carefully, like so. Now, a positionable mid-gun repost featuring leveler dual recoilless 75 millimeter cannons with a soft rock recoil compensation adjustment lifter. A fan propelled reconnaissance craft with a 110 horsepower blower direct drive engine transaxle and two 7.62 millimeter computer synchronized machine guns. A craft that is removable for advanced scouting, a hinged missile door, armor plated space frame hover shroud, they call it. Uh, the fancy name that has two pivoting repeater nine millimeter auto load machine guns which opens to reveal well, in, well anyways they're talking about the armor plated space frame cover shroud that opens to re reveal the recon craft a mount base for the craft that is described as reinforced hover storage liftoff pad four removable lancer bipulse guidance missiles, a 9 liter 900 horsepower twin turbo diesel engine, and plenty of room for vehicle to transport up to 12 G.I. Joe action figures on its track sill battle platforms. Now these sill battle platforms have, you know, I can see, let's count them, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Plus the four, I guess that's 12, right? So, now it fits four in here comfortably. You can have guys pile on the side if you want to, but uh, I think four is plenty. You got two guys inside um, checking out the uh, radar on the front, and plus probably uh, firing these two guns here. And the scout car, or the scout craft, hovercraft, which this opens up like that. This can lift off. And these do move side to side just for a little bit of action but great detail on the, on the hovercraft as you can see the motor here in the back and does have the exhaust um, has the mounted guns on the side there's the front here's the bottom as you can see it's got the two fans on the bottom really nice detail on the craft uh, great for scouting ahead to uh, search out those Cobra positions and because uh, Cross Country has very little armor he is kind of wide open sitting in that chair you definitely want to scout out anything ahead before you go attack it full on um, now to place this back in I would have it hover and go in this way like that backwards that way you're, you're you got clearance and then it closes it has the hinge on this side which goes over the top and clips in like that now the missiles will fall out pretty easily um, they are kind of bugaboos when you get messing with them it's a good thing they are orange because if you're a kid playing outside those would easily be lost if they were green um, let's take a look at the side as you can see these covers here are pretty sweet to cover the tracks uh, this is a complete vehicle um, it does have some damage on the two, uh, had two joysticks right here. And uh, as you can see, they broke off pretty easy. Probably because the G.I. Joe hands don't really fit that well on them. And I wouldn't recommend putting, putting G.I. Joe's hands on them or clipped on them anyway. Because uh, you know I'll know about the G.I. Joe's hands breaking. But there's the side of the vehicle there and then uh, you can see the engine detail right here on the inside did a really nice job a really cool looking uh, engine there and it's got some uh, tools laying in the back a couple of wrenches uh, really nice detailing on this vehicle it's one of my favorite vehicles although not really practical um, I still think it's cool for its play value, which it has a lot. Uh, you have the two guns on the front, as you can see there. The pivoting, they can go side to side here. Can't really get anything this way. Uh, so, you know, if you came at it on its 
if you flank this thing, you could probably take it out pretty easy. But we're going to go ahead and open up the canopy. Which opens like so. I'm going to have to move this. Like this. And there we go. That way the canopy opens easy. And I got uh, Breaker and Lieutenant Falcon inside. And you can see the, they lay down and they have a screen that they can look at. Probably a radar screen. Uh, to look at the terrain ahead a lot of detail inside uh, we'll take these guys out so you can take a look at the detail inside uh, it's pretty sweet really like it I see the headlights on the front they are stickers but hey at least they are headlights um, we'll take a look at the bottom not a whole lot of detail on the bottom they do have wheels um, on the tracks which is good for rolling around um, I would suggest laying your figures down like so so they can they're kind of looking at the oops so they're kind of looking at their radar screens like that to get the most out of your Joe's make sure their arms are inside before you close that down and then you can uh, position your guns, I usually position like that for riding for the best stability. You're not going to be able to open the canopy that way. But uh, very good attack vehicle. I would suggest having a vehicle with some artillery to travel with this thing and to stay behind so you can get some coordinates from the scout car and have it hit hit the uh, targets with your artillery first and then send in this havoc to wreak havoc on all the Cobra soldiers left and to mop up more of a mop up vehicle and uh, probably a straight I, I would definitely have him back a little bit there is no I mean you take you take him out and there's no more of these guns so um, these missiles here I really don't know what, uh, I guess you could spin the thing around and shoot the, the missiles off, um, or if they are guided missiles, I guess they just shoot off and you could pretend they, you know, swung around and went that way, but uh, a lot of play features on this uh, Havoc and really cool, but uh, easily lost pieces for this are the missiles, the uh, hovercraft, the two small cannons. And the track cover so um, I'm really happy to have this in complete form really nice piece to have nice original piece that is the GI Joe Havoc from 1986 and uh, I really like it a lot if you have any questions just comment on the bottom um, of course uh, I probably will re replace the stickers on them because they weren't really done very well uh, as you can see these GI Joe stickers are angled some of these are okay the way they are but i just don't like that one because it's angled doesn't look streamlined um, the rest of them are good i may just take that one off uh, this one's a lot better on this side a lot better for sure but uh, i don't even like the number four angled i'd like it to be straight up and down i'm a stickler that way but uh, that is the gi joe havoc from 1986 and thanks for being with me. And this is Tim from G.I. Joe Immortal. And we'll see you again next time. And have a good night, everybody.